So, uh, let's try and make a trivia buzzer system, and we want to do this with a melee design, so we can kind of exploit the asynchronous nature of the melee design. And we're going to use D flip flops. So let's imagine that we've got some sort of game. We want to see the first person to press the button, right? So what we're going to have is we're going to have some lights that are going to turn on, or these are going to be some outputs. Then we're going to have Team 1's button and Team 2's button. And let's say uh, both lights are off, and Team 2 presses their button first. The system should detect that, turn on the light, and then this light's going to remain on even when the button's uh, turned off picked up, like turned off, right? they're not pressing it anymore, this light should still remain on until someone presses this reset button and it will turn all the lights off. So, um, so that's kind of the idea, right? We're going to have three inputs. We're going to have uh, Team 1's button, Team 2's button, and reset. That's going to be the three inputs. And we're going to have two outputs, uh, Team 1's light and Team 2's light. So now let's figure out what the diagram would look like for this. This diagram is going to be a little bit different because uh, we have three inputs. A lot of the times when we look at these more machines, we're only dealing with like one input. But here we've got three. And so that, that could potentially cause a lot of arrows, right? If we have, if we have three arrows, or if we have three inputs and we have three states, that's going to be eight arrows times three states. So that's that's going to be quite a few arrows. So we're going to actually simplify things a little bit. Given our description, we, we can actually start throwing in some don't care conditions. We're saying, doesn't matter what the, like in this case, we're, well, here, I'll, I'll just start talking about it. So we're going to say that A is kind of our resting state where none of the lights are on. If if someone if someone gives it a reset, or, or here's here's my key right, so zero is reset, TB two is here and TB one is here. So team two's button, team one's button input, and then these are the outputs. Remember this is a melee design, so our outputs are in the transitions. So here we're saying that reset is a one, meaning someone is resetting the system. So it doesn't matter what the what the teams are pressing because no matter what, we want to go to this state and we want the outputs to be zeros. And then also, I, so I have the event of a tie and I don't really have a good way to handle that. We'd have to have another state to recognize it. But for this way, for this one, it's, it's so unlikely that they would press them at, at the exact same instant that we're just going to send it back to this resting state. So this is kind of a, a poor design choice, I would say, but for the sake of this example, we're just going to keep it like that. Um, and then let's look at this. Say we're at our resting state, and Team 1 presses their button. So if Team 1 presses their button, that means Team 2 hasn't pressed theirs yet, and we're going to assume that no, one, no one's pressing the reset button. So that's going to send us to state B, and we're going to turn on team one's butt or team one's light and then we're going to stay at team uh, we're going to stay oops, excuse me we're going to stay at the state b and output a zero one or that means that uh, team one's light is on we're going to stay here while reset is a zero it doesn't matter what anyone else presses until someone presses a one on the reset and we're going to reset back to A. The lights are going to go off, and we're going to go back at state A, and we're essentially ready for a new round. So that same thing works for team two. If team one or team team two presses their button first, that means team one hasn't pressed theirs, and we're going to go to state C. Uh, team two's light will turn on, and will remain at this state until reset. So reset's a zero, so we're going to stay here. This light's going to be on until a reset. Then we're going to go back to state A. So I use a lot of these don't care conditions because basically nothing else is going to happen if this is a one. If this is a one, if if these are zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one, no matter what, this don't care condition says that we're going to go back to A. 
So you can imagine that this is going to uh, these don't care conditions are going to come into our state diagrams and they're going to make things a lot easier for us. So our, our state table is now going to be a lot longer, right? Because we've got multiple combinations of inputs. And once again, I'm exploiting our don't care conditions just to make this not be too long. And so for our outputs, our output is now a function of the current state and the current inputs. So that's why we have to have these listed uh, in these columns here. And once again, we're using the don't care conditions. So if we're, well, how to fill this out is we can just look at our diagram we've made and we can start figuring out where we go, kind of asking as a question. If we're at state A, so we're at state A, and we get an input of 0, 0, 0. So if we get an input of 0, 0, 0, oops, it looks like I'm actually missing an arrow there. If we're at 0, 0, 0, then we just need to stay at state A. So that's why I put an A there. Then here, we're saying that we're at state A and button 1 is pressed, right? Team, team 1's button is pressed. So that means we need to go to state B. And also we can look at this here, right? Our output needs to go to a 0, 1 or a light 1. Team 1's light needs to get turned to a 1 or turned on. So, uh, and then we have this don't care condition, right? This 1xx. So if we're at reset, no matter what, for, for any of these states, if we get a reset, we need to go back to A. So that's what I've done here is if we get a reset, we're always going to state A. Then if we're at B or C, we basically said that if as long as resets a zero, right, for all these guys, resets a zero, we just want to stay at our current state. If resets a zero, we stay at our state. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're staying at our state. B, B, B. And if we're at C, we stay at C until the reset button is pressed. Then we go back to A. Now, um, our, our output should also essentially match the state that we're in. So this almost kind of feels like a more design. We're at state C, and so now we want our output to, to be for, uh, for team 2, right? So team 2, team 2, team 2, and this is team 1, team 1, team 1. Until we get a reset, the moment we get a reset, our output needs, needs to change to zeros. So we need, uh, we need to assign some flip-flop values for these states now. Remember, we can't really hold A, B, and C. We can't hold those in our memory unless it's an ASCII, but we don't want to do that. So we're going to say A is 0, 0, B is 0, 1, C is 1, 0, and D is 1, 1. Now D is going to be an unused state, but we're still going to kind of put it in there. Now, uh, this is... This, I would say this is an intelligent way to go about making this assignment because you can actually see this is going to match our outputs. If we're at state A, our output's going to be a 0, 0. If we're at state B, we're going to be at 0, 1. And we're at state C, our output's going to be 1, 0. So this is kind of going to help us out in the long run. Now what we do is we take this table here and we substitute in these values for these letters. So A becomes a 0, 0, uh, B becomes a 0, 1, so on and so forth. And we already know these values are going to stay the same. And so just to save myself some work, I just wrote same as above here. Now we need to do a little bit of reorganization of this table so it can look like a, a proper truth table. Or ideally, we want each one of these uh, right reset team 2's button and team 1's button we want it to be its own dedicated column so how do we go about doing this well I I do a little bit, bit of reorganization and this is just a choice that I made to make things a little bit easier so I put my inputs on the left side so I, I essentially took the inputs and put them on the other side of the current state and the reason for that is I want R to be the most significant bit. And mind you, this, this trick I'm doing, this isn't a trick that you always need to do. This is just something, 
in this specific example that I thought it made sense to do. You you have some creative freedom when you do this. There there is a prescribed method, but sometimes rearranging things can make your life a lot easier. And so the reason I made R the most significant bit here is because if it's a one, we have this I don't care what the rest of the inputs are, I want to go to state zero and I want the output to be zero. So that's why I put R on this side. But it should still make sense. It's still the same data that's here. And then what I did is essentially just treat treat each one of these like it's a question again, right? So we've got our our inputs and our and our current state. So these are the things that are going to be varying for our truth table. So we got 0000, 0001, 0010, 0011, and I just counted, right, to fill this in until I got to this was a 1, then I put some don't care conditions here. And so the question then becomes, if I'm at state 00, zero and my inputs are all 0, then my next state should be what? Well, it should we should stay at state 00, zero and our output should be 00. zero. Then if I'm at state 1 and my inputs are all zeros, then what should my next state be? Well, I should stay at the state I'm at and I should stay at this output. So I kind of just went through and used this to answer all the questions that this table asks. And now, this is, this is a Mondo truth table, so we should expect to see some Mondo big uh, K maps. So we can start doing our K maps. Let's do Y2 first. So we've got a five input table essentially, right? One, two, three, four, five inputs determine Y2. So well, we're gonna see that that is gonna kind of simplify, but let's assume that we didn't notice that right away. So we're gonna be sad about the fact that we've got a five input table, but we're gonna suck it up and do it because we're good electrical engineers. So we've got TB2, TB1, Y2, Y1, and then our higher dimension is going to be R. So we've got R equals 0 and R equals 1. Now the nice thing, what we're going to notice here is if you look at our table, when R is a 1, everything is always just going to be a 0. So that means we can fill all of these with zeros. And this is going to cause uh, us some, it's going to make things a little bit more simple for us. But then the rest of us, we're just looking at our data, right? 0, 0, 1, x, or don't care. So we've got 0, 0, 1, x. Don't forget to label your truth tables right, otherwise you're going to get the wrong order. So we just go through and fill each one of these cells based on this table. And this is what we get. And then we do our grouping. So we've got a big group here, taking advantage of our don't care conditions. And we also group this guy here. So... We find that for all these groups, R remains constant. It stays at a zero. So we got R naught, and then this group here is just Y2. Then we have OR, R naught, and then we have TB2 is a constant one, TB1 is a constant zero, and Y1 is a constant zero. So we can actually factor out this R prime. And so here we can notice, when you look back at our truth table, we're going to say, oh, so whenever, whenever R is a zero, or whenever R is a one, that means the output's gonna be zero. So we can stop drawing this part of the truth table because we know it's always gonna be zero. We can never actually group into this. So we just know that R is always going to be a constant zero for every group that we select. So we just need to keep that in mind. So then the same way we did Y2, we now do Y1, we fill it out. We end up with these two groups here. So this is what we get from our groups, and we need to remember that R not is a constant, right? R not is a constant. So essentially, I I skipped a step and I factored out this R not, but you could have these in, the, just like how we had them here. You could have the R not in the terms, but I factored it out. And then we can do the same process for uh, Team Two's light and Team One's light, right? And we're just gonna we're just treating this as a truth table, and this is the output. And something that's worked out really nice for us is if we look at Team Two's light, 
and y2 or the the next state it actually just is the same exact thing so we have a zero here zero here zero here zero here one one x x zero 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 same thing for y1 is just the same as light one so that means that this table and this table are just going to be replicated here so that means that team two's light just equals the next state for y2 and team one's light just equals the next state for y1 so we so just the same exact expression so that means we only need to make the circuit for y2 and we can hook it up to the output for tl2 so here's what the final circuit looks like we've got two d flip-flops and I, I made a comment saying that my routing here is really bad it, it's it's not excellent I wouldn't give it an A but either way this is the first function that we found here right that's this function and we just implement that with gates and we're connecting our R TB2 TB1 and Y2 over here and so we said that TL2 and Y2 share the same function and so that's why Y2 is connecting to this D flip-flop and also TL2 is tapping into it so this is kind of the final realization of what this circuit's going to look like um, so despite the fact we had these huge tables it kind of refined to a pretty small circuit um, so this is just an, an example of a melee design and uh, some tricks that we can use to uh, kind of simplify things